Good morning, students. Good morning, math enthusiasts. Today, we will discuss solutions to right triangles. Well, of course, you are familiar with a right triangle. It is a triangle having one interior angle that measures 90 degrees. The rest of the interior angles are acute angles that are measuring less than 90 degrees. This is an example of a right triangle. There are six parts in a right triangle. Three angles, angle A, angle B, and angle C, and three sides, side A, side B, and side C. Observe that side A is opposite to angle A, side B is opposite to angle B, and side C is opposite to angle C. This is how we label a right triangle. Side C is the hypotenuse which is always opposite to the right angle C. Not all values of the six parts may be given to you. You may be given at least two parts of the triangle, say side A and angle B. Of course, angle C is also given to be a right angle. Then you will be asked to determine the values of the remaining parts. We may come across with real-life problems that involve solutions to right triangles. For example, you may need to determine the width of a river amidst a flood in order to cross it using a log of a tree. It is important then that you know how to solve problems like this. For example, suppose that you are given angle A equals 36 degrees and side C is equal to 10 units. Well, of course, you know that angle C is 90 degrees. So, you need to find angle B, side A, and side B. There are three unknown parts in the problem so that you need three steps. Which of these parts are easy to solve first? Yes, it is angle B. Angle B is the only unknown angle. To solve as our step 1, recall that the sum of the interior angles of any triangle is 180 degrees. That is, angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees. Since we have a right triangle, angle C is 90 degrees by substitution. By transposing 90 degrees to the right side of the equation, and then by simplifying the equation, we have angle A plus angle B equals 90 degrees. This becomes our new equation and our new formula in finding one remaining unknown angle in a right triangle. By substitution, angle A is equal to 30 de 36 degrees. So we have 36 degrees plus angle B equals 90 degrees. By transposing 36 degrees to the right side of the equation and by simplifying, angle B becomes 54 degrees. We have obtained 54 degrees as the measure of angle B. We have two more parts unknown, side A and side B. You can solve for side A first, or you can solve for side B first. It is up to you. But for my solution, I prefer to solve for side A first, thinking of the alphabetical order. Step 2 is to solve for side A. In this step, we shall be using any of the definitions of the six trigonometric functions. Look at the given values in the figure excluding angle B, which we have obtained in the previous slide. We are looking for side A. What is side A in relation to angle A? Correct! It is the opposite side of angle A. Side C is the hypotenuse. What trigonometric functions involve the opposite side and the hypotenuse? Yes, the sine and the cosecant functions. In this problem, we shall prefer to use the sine function. The sine function is easier to be manipulated in the scientific calculator. Since side A is an opposite side to angle A and the given side is a hypotenuse, which is C, then we use the definition of the trigonometric function sine. 
That is, sine A is equal to A over C. By substitution, we have sine 36 degrees is equal to A over 10. We cross multiply so that side A will be placed on the left side of the equation and on the right side will be the known values. Using your scientific calculator, press 10 sine 36 equals and you will obtain 5.877852523. Psi A then is approximately 5.877852523 units. Observe in this figure that I have copied all the digits found in the scientific calculator. This is because this value might be used in another equation to obtain another unknown value. The next value can be more approximated by doing this, instead of substituting a rounded-off value. The next value can be found using the Pythagorean theorem. Notice that side B is the remaining side that is unknown. The Pythagorean theorem states that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. The Pythagorean theorem was derived from a right triangle so that we are allowed to use this formula here. By substitution, we have the square of the quantity 5.877852523 plus B squared equals the square of 10. We place the known values to the right side of the equation, leaving B squared on the left side. We transpose the exponent 2 of b to the right side so that we have the equation b equals the square root of the difference of the square of 10 and the square of 5.877852523. Using your calculator, simply press the keys with this format. Then you will surely obtain 11.5995323 which is the measure of side B. Side B is measuring 11, approximately 11.5995323 units. You can also solve for side B in a different way. In the third step, you actually have two options of formula to be used. You may also use any of the definitions of the six trigonometric functions. Since we are looking for side B, we look at side B in the figure and its relation to the given values, say angle A and side C. Side B is an adjacent side of angle A and still side C is a hypotenuse. The trigonometric functions that involve an adjacent side and a hypotenuse are the cosine and second functions. Again, we shall be using the cosine function for convenience. Since side B is an adjacent side to angle A and the given side C is a hypotenuse, then we use the definition of the trigonometric function cosine. That is, cosine A is equal to B over C. By substitution, we have the equation cos 36 degrees equals B over 10. By cross multiplication, so that the unknown will be on the left side, of the equation and the known values will be on the right side of the equation, we have B equals 10 cos 36 degrees. Using scientific calculator and by pressing the keys 10 cos 36 degrees or 10 cos 36 equals, you will obtain 11.5995323, which is exactly the same with a previous slide using the Pythagorean theorem. This implies that you can use any of these two formula at step 3. Hence, we have obtained the values of the three unknown parts, B, side A, side B. We rounded off side A and side B to two decimal places because it is already our final answer. As a recap, 
Take note of the three formulas to be used. We use angle A plus angle B equals 90 degrees whenever we are looking for one remaining unknown angle. All the time, we use the definitions of the trigonometric functions in step 2, but we sometimes use it, use it in step 3. The Pythagorean theorem is used whenever you are looking for one remaining unknown site. The Pythagorean theorem may be used as a first step if the problem given involves one remaining side unknown instead of one remaining angle unknown. Take note also that the easy in choosing for the trigonometric function to use in step 2 is to focus only on finding relationships of the given parts of the triangle and the unknown part that you are currently looking for in step 2 or in step 3. That ends our discussion for today. Thank you very much. Remember, math is easy to learn when one learns with enthusiasm. Bye!